probably have time for one more question before we move to the opportunity of candidates to question each other and then make your summary statement to us. The evening has moved that quickly. So let us pick up the federal budget. The first person who would uh, <coughs> thus by rotation uh, requested to answer would be Mr. As is the case with the main state budget, which some of you have helped shape in past years, a commanding portion of the United States federal budget is devoted to funding social, medical, educational, or entitlement programs. Unlike Maine, a significant portion of the federal budget is devoted to defense spending in this country and elsewhere. To reduce the federal deficit, significant budget changes will likely have to touch both of those greater fields. In that field of budget cutting, do you have any sacred cows? What, to you, is within limits of what is outside? And if, as a United States Senator, you pick up the budget trimming blade, where do you point it first? Question would be uh, offered to Mr. Hink first. Three minutes. Well, let me just state straight <coughs> that uh, I would like us to reduce the uh, federal deficit and grow down the national debt. I think it should be a high priority of this country. Uh, I, uh, if you send me to Washington, I will be paying attention to that every single day. Um, I think it's unconscionable that we would pass on the kind of debt and deficit that we are currently passing on to generations that follow. It's just wrong. Uh, you know, I do think, uh, having followed what economists have to say, that if suddenly the federal government were to would pull back on spending, it could have a very adverse impact on a fragile economy. So what we would really like to have is a Congress that was working with the President to pull off the difficult transition of supporting economic growth while the economy is weak. And then when the engine of the American economy gets to grow, gets to move, we have to address the debt and deficit. Uh, I don't think to do it responsibly, we can bring too many sacred cows. Uh, I think we're going to have to do everything we're going to have to increase taxes and we're going to have to cut spending. The spending cuts are going to have to touch everything. The debt is, is large. The deficit is large. Uh, there are constituents behind each aspect of that federal budget. And if everyone holds on to sacred cows, we go nowhere. And that's what's happened today, and that has to change. Uh, Simpson Bowles was the commission that came up with recommendations. And what they said was we need Revenue increases and we need tax cuts. I don't like all of their recommendations down the line. The problem is that uh, everyone's got objections and they're different. So we've adopted nothing out of their recommendations to date. We really should take at least the recommendations of Simpson Bowles and work with them very soon and move this problem forward and address it. Um, I have to tell you, you know, I'm a Democrat, and I'm a caring human being, and it seems to me that Social Security and Medicare and some other earned benefits are very fundamental to what we have here in the United States. So I would fight for them. Does that mean they could never be touched? I tell you what it does mean is I don't go into a negotiating room and put them on the table. Unfortunately, some of our allies sometimes do that. But if we were actually responsibly dealing with the debt and the deficit, then maybe we'd have to talk about those too. I would be very, very protective of them. But some of the other things you mentioned obviously are ready to receive more cuts. The defense budget, and by the way, tax increases. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Now, by rotation, the same question on the federal budget dilemma is uh, for three minutes to Mr. Paul. Thank you, Representative Adams. I think that the issue of how do we reduce our deficit spending is, is probably 
the critical question of the day. I don't claim to have all the answers right now. I, this is something that I'm continuing to research through my campaign and gather input from constituents and studies. Um, so this will not be a comprehensive answer, but I, I will be issuing a, a policy position paper on my, on my website later in the campaign. Um, I don't have any sacred cows. I think everything has to be on the table. Um, I do agree that we need a combination of spending cuts and revenue increases. And I, I do think that the wealthiest Americans benefited the most from the prosperity of recent decades and are those who are able to pay are, are both, um, I think it's just and fair to have agreed the economic benefits of the, and much of it is directly um, government spending. It, it's just what's being called from capitalism and um, um, that those individuals and corporations should be, should be responsible. Um, I also, um, I do think Simpson Polls has a lot of great recommendations and, and, um, and, and one of the things is all the, the deductions and I think people talk a lot about simplifying the tax code. I'll mention some possibilities. Um, well, first of all, any subsidies to the oil industry I will eliminate completely. Any subsidies to the nuclear power industry I've already said I want to end the nuclear power industry completely. Um, also, industrial agriculture, I think, has a lot of power to Iowa Congress, and I think we need to look at revising the presidential primary system because of the enormous amount of power that goes to Iowa and the effect on federal policy. Um, those are things I would cut. I think we need to look at the mortgage interest deduction. This is something that may not be popular, maybe controversial, but it's really it's, it's resources towards homeowners and away from tenants and people who are not um, the employer health insurance deduction, again, this is something I'm putting out as a possibility that we should be talking about. Um, why is this a deduction, but if I'm an individual and I have my own health insurance, it's not a deduction. That doesn't seem fair. And we, we, there seems to be a clear consensus we need to simplify the tax code. Um, and I feel like I have to have to have Thank you, Mr. Paul. Uh, by rotation, the same question now that we raised Mr. Dunlap. Thank you, Representative Adams. And as an aside, getting back to the lighting question, it is manifestly clear that Portland Cup does not qualify. <laughs> the federal budget, um, I think the things that I would probably find greatest resistance to subjecting to cuts and would be uh, the lighting fund, Social Security, Medicare, those things that people depend on. Uh, in some cases, in life and death circumstances. Um, in terms of the types of things that I would see go away, will be the first thing that I would subject to the budget tonight. Now, all of us who have worked on budgets know quite well that uh, when you offer up a tax incentive or a tax cut, that is treated as a budget item that must be paid for. And in the spirit of being consistent with budgetary processes, I would offer up the Bush tax cuts as a likely thing to be cutting out of the federal budget. And I don't say that in any way tongue-in-cheek. The, the deficit problems that we have today are rooted in the growing inequality in the tax code. Going back to even as, as recently as the late 1970s, the top nominal rate in the income tax was 70%. And now it is less than half of that. With the policy understanding, or the theory, if you will, that somehow those who benefit from such tax incentives will then use the, the extra revenues to conduct themselves in a, in a manner of, in, of the public good, largesse, if you will, to, to infuse the economy with revenues to create jobs and build the economy forthwith, which apparently has been one of our least talked about, but most, most grotesque failures of public policy in the last 40 years. Because here we are today talking about massive deficits, near record unemployment adjusted for uh, what counts as unemployment since the Depression. And I think that we need to take a strong policy look at not only simply reducing the deficit, but the same reducing the deficit 
which is a worry in and of itself, but a positive policy direction to bring that revenue back forward to put people back to work and support some of these very, very vital government programs like Medicare, Social Security, MIDE, and so many others. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Uh, now, the same uh, question, three minutes, Ms. Dill. Thank you. Um, I will hopefully be very I, I, um, Every president for the last 30 years has increased the national debt. Um, it's a problem that um, is, has been uh, for both, both parties for every generation. But as we sit here today, the problem of debt and deficit, in my view, is largely uh, on account of three things. War, uh, tax policy, and uh, Wall Street. And what I mean by that is that the uh, federal spending on defense exceeds $700 billion. It's a huge portion of our uh, federal budget and in large part driven by the wars that we've been funding in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I, I support reducing <coughs> military spending. I support uh, uh, definite reductions in the military budget. Um, on the flip side, in terms of revenue, I support reforming the tax code so that everybody pays their fair share. We're paying the lowest income taxes that we've paid in many years. Um, income tax is the largest uh, portion of revenue that the United States government has, and we need to obviously make the system fair. I would support the bucket rule. Um, with respect to Wall Street, um, one of the primary reasons why President Obama has struggled with a high unemployment rate and the recession has endured for so long, it's because of the um, just horrendous uh, criminal activity that took place on Wall Street as a result of deregulation. We had basically people looting our economy that haven't been held accountable, that drove us into the worst recession since the 1920s. And those three things, I think, account for where we are today. Too much war spending, unfair tax policy, and deregulation of Wall Street. If we can address those three, I think we can get back uh, to a good place. And I would just say, on a hopeful note, that we can. There have been periods of time where the country has experienced high levels of debt um, following the Civil War, for instance. Um, so there is a path forward, but we just need to take um, responsible steps. I have the political will to make the hard decisions that I think can lead to a healthier economy, a healthier federal budget. In terms of sacred cows, I don't have any sacred cows. I would, though, strengthen programs like Social Security and Medicare. I think in terms of Social Security, I would um, support raising the cap so that the higher income uh, people would have to contribute more into the program. Um, so I think there, there are things that we can do. Um, I'm not at all pessimistic that we're on a downward spiral. <coughs> There's uh, bright days ahead for our country. But in my view, we need a new generation of leadership in Washington that are willing to make the hard choices about reducing our reliance on uh, foreign oil, uh, reducing our military budget, uh, reforming the tax code, and um, reasonably regulating some of the big corporations and, and banks that are managing a lot of the money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs>